Well, hello there. Welcome to Pickin' Corners. It's a fun show. It's an informative show where we discuss nothing but highbrow topics that affect the world, such as how, when, and why your ass cheeks might remain clenched throughout the entire duration of the spring. The weather's just getting a little bit warmer, and now the ass cheeks are going to get a little bit tighter. Why is that? Because the NHL playoffs are right around the corner, and for the early watchers of this show, the first people who caught my videos and had faith in a sniffer with little information about him, they reaped the rewards of the clenched ass cheeks theory. What is this clenched ass cheeks theory? I will discuss that more in detail. I opened the can of worms on it. Now, you know, it, it's a revelation. People are holding up clenched ass cheeks signs out there because it's going to foreshadow things to come. Last season, interestingly enough, in the playoffs, yeah, there were definitely a fair amount of clenched ass cheeks games. I actually, should I put that on hold for a second? First of all, I want to thank everybody on the Patreon, A, for being the Green Bay Packers minority owners that you are. That's what I like to call you guys. You guys, just like the owners of the Green Bay Packers, you own this show until I decide to make an executive decision, and then all of a sudden you're like the Packers owners, and it means absolutely nothing. But until that, you can say you are a part owner of this show. You're a minority owner, and I want to thank you very much, and thank you for joining the live stream last night. I hope to give you guys a couple of shots. I had a couple early rants, and then I kind of faded as the night went along. But it was a pretty good time regardless, and it was great to hit those Tampa Bay bets at the end of the night. I want to open up by talking about the Colorado game quickly because God forbid I ever make a mistake. God forbid. You know they're going wild about it because they're permanent jackals, always going wild. But earlier in the video today, I thought that the game was in Columbus between the Avalanche and the Columbus Blue Jackets. I am aware that it is in Colorado, not Columbus, which really just means the combinations that I gave, that top-line combination, you should even like it more because look at Nathan McKinnon's home road splits. He's got a point in every single home game, and then still everything I said about, about McDavid and Kucherov going off last night, the stage is set for him to go completely off. It doesn't mean that, you know, I eyed that second line just to see, just to see, because, you know, you have the big trio of McCarr, McKinnon, and Rantanen. I did take a little side look at the second trio, the Lekkanen, Middlestat, Taves. I mean, in a game where a ton of points could be tossed around. And one thing that I forgot to mention was I kind of do like both teams to score two plus in this one. When you're Colorado, they're just like you and me. When there's that task, you look over. You know, you're not as detail-oriented as you might be if it was a different team. It's the Columbus Blue Jackets. I think they're going to be able to score a goal or two. So there are some weird value props in there. I know Josh frequently talked about whoever's playing alongside Jenner and Goudreau. And the Nylander shots on goal prop hits so often. And then he, he had a dud in one game. Curious to see if he gets back on the right side of those shots on goal. So those are some things to look at in this game. I understand it's in Colorado. I understand. So relax. The same bets still apply. The McKinnon Ranton in line is matchup proof, home visit proof, but you just tend to like them even more on their own home ice. Cause that whole thing McKinnon's got going at, the end of the season isn't that far. I think it's starting to become likely Nathan McKinnon is truly going to register a point in every single home game this year, which is a pretty absurd statistic. I did throw a mini sprinkle on Connor McDavid to win the uh, Art Ross just because, A, he has two games in hand, and B, he's the most capable of these guys, although they're doing everything to get Kucherov, those empty netters. He's the most capable of those guys, I feel like, to rip off a couple straight four-point games in a row. And I got, like, plus 1,100 odds on it. We'll see. I, he's so in my good graces after that all-star skills competition where he just won everything for me that I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give him a chance to win even more. So I took him to win the Art Ross at plus 1100. Now let me expand upon the clenched ass cheeks theory, 
and the origins and where it stems. Well, the true clenched ass cheeks theory stems from before the lockout. Oh my God, I'm doing one of those history lessons. I'm doing the Putin thing where he goes, well, let me tell you, sir. In the year nine, yeah, nine, there was this guy, he didn't like where he lived, so he he wanted to move. Anyway, before the lockout, the NHL was all that I personally think the Devils ruined the entire league by introducing the trap. And then other teams started to do it. And then you got to playoff games where the Minnesota Wild are the like seven seed and the Anaheim Mighty Ducks are the eight seed. Both of them just play the traps and they take out all the talented teams and you're getting zero, zero overtime games in the Western Conference Finals. And then who's on the other side of the bracket? The Devils is trapping their way. And then you're getting trappers and trappers in the Stanley Cup. Every final is two to nothing. So they had to change some rules to open up the score. Like if you scored the first goal in the playoffs back then, it, it was over. If the sports books were legal, I re- would, would they set the totals at three and a half in some of those games? That's how boring they were. But anyway, I noticed when I was younger, like my, in the playoffs, it's just, it's a separate league. The same rules don't apply. You can tackle people and now they change the rules during the lockout. I do want to let you know, by the way, before the lockout in 2004, 2005, any of you casuals out there, there was a thing called a two-line pass. You couldn't make a pass that went more than two lines. So if you're in your own zone and you see a guy trying to go for a breakaway and you passed it, they would blow it dead if the pass crossed the blue line and the red line at center ice. The refs blew the play dead. So you weren't allowed to have a stretch pass. Instead, you had to do a chess game of passes up the ice. And other teams, knowing that you couldn't stress the ice, a team like the Devils, they sat all five guys back in the neutral zone and said, go ahead. We don't have to worry about a guy beating us for like a breakaway pass behind us all. So we're going to sit everybody back as they try to chess their way through the neutral zone and get the puck deep. And, and it made for an awful, everything was unders game. Then when you couple that with the fact that they were less likely to call penalties in the playoffs. Everything was always unders, 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 unders. And that all it all culminated in the 03-04 NHL All-Star game, where I took the under and the final score was like in the single digits. That's how far scoring was down. And now even post-lockout, it's not even remotely like that, but a lot of the same stuff applies with the change in rule application. Things that you see called in the playoffs are different. Like the the threshold of what's called during the playoffs is way higher than during the regular season. So when you think about power plays accounting for so much of a team's offense, if these teams are less likely to go on the power play, there are fewer goals scored. And also... The, the clenched ass cheeks factor of the deeper you go into the playoffs and the more that's on the line in a game, the more likely I am to hammer an under, meaning a series is tied at two. That game five, you'll never, ever see me take the over. With, with the pivotal game five, where both teams know, who, essentially whoever wins this is most likely going to win the series, that's full clenched ass cheeks. Game seven is the culmination of ass cheeks. <laughs> Somebody messaged me before just saying like my girlfriend walked by the TV and you're yelling about clenched ass cheeks and and I had to explain what was going on well more more splaining for you to do but I'm splaining to you right now and the further you move along in the playoffs the higher I value the clenched ass cheeks theory for example night one round one I'm not I'm it's not clenched ass plenty of the, the that's when the refs are still happy to call penalties that's when teams still feel like they have leeway it's game one you see a ton of upsets but as you move deeper into the playoffs you look at just some of these series last year was a wild round of playoffs two years ago to me that's what the nhl playoffs normally looks like oh a little upset here a little upset there edmonton upset in calgary that was a pretty crazy one but last year it was full ruckus in a bad way. You had the defending cup champs, the winner of their division, Colorado Avalanche, losing to an expansion franchise. You had a Boston Bruins team who had the best record in the history of the NHL, the most points ever, 
lose in the first round to a team that only qualified because the Pittsburgh Penguins couldn't beat the Chicago Blackhawks on their own home ice to qualify for the playoffs. So last year, to me, was way more of an outlier. But still, even within the playoffs last year, you would think the Leafs and the Panthers, not this year's Panthers, last year's Panthers, who you could score against and still was closer during the season to that cardiac Cats version where you'd see high-scoring games. They play the Leafs. Oh, you'd assume, oh, there's got to be goals all over the place, right? 3-2, 2-1, 3-2. That's what the clenched ass cheeks does. It pulls everyone down to earth. And then couple that with fewer penalties called, fewer power plays. The only thing that jacks up totals in the playoffs is that all coaches know that there's no season to worry about anymore. You get multiple goalie pulls, multiple. They'll pull it because there's nothing to lose. You may as well keep pulling it, but you guys know how to beat that. I already told you, if you're on pace for a solid under and you see that that multiple goal, uh, goalie pulls is on the table, you take that team for minus two and a half. So if a team or if a team is up by two, you take them for minus three and a half, or you take the over. You get what I'm saying. You 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 mitigate a potential screw job. So if two more goals are going to screw you, then you take that team. If they're up by one, by minus two and a half or something like that, there are ways to mitigate multiple empty net screw jobs. If the game is trending towards an under, you will be paid off regardless if you are paying attention using the live lines. So that's a little expansion of the clenched ass cheeks theory. Okay. The further you get along, the more the game meet. we're starting to see it just for, for playoff seating. You saw, I mean, the, the Carolina Rangers game, that's, that couldn't exemplify it any better. And if there was a game seven between Carolina and the Rangers, it would look just like that. And now you're probably going to point to the, oh, did you see the game seven between them? Yeah, that was a weird outlier. It was like Coach Hetkoff's first game. They had to throw him in in a game seven. That was a wacky one. But if you look at the rest of that series, pretty much all unders. So now that we have moved past the ass and, and we will, we're going to keep talking about it. So don't fear, don't fear the clenched ass cheeks going away. I mean, it's going to, it's, it's time to shine. It's ass clenching season, not ass clenching week. We'll be talking about it straight through the summer. You can start wearing white again. You can start talking about ass clenching again. Uh, the next thing I want to bring up before I do a quick look at the weekend is the, the over under point philosophy. And you can utilize this in instances when you're doing your trickle down snake economics homework, you're checking those line combinations. You learn that somebody got demoted to like the fourth line, somebody who's unexpected. You want to know a good example of this? Sean Couturier, this whole drama with him. Well, before he was healthy scratched, he went from the top line with Konechny to the fourth line, getting like 11 minutes a game. Now, I don't know if you know this, but built into sports books are like these for lack of a better term, algorithms. If you take an under on a point from a guy on one team and an over on a point from another guy on that same exact team, it amplifies the odds because you're betting against yourself. It's like betting an over two points on a player and the under six and a half. The fact that those are two opposite magnetic forces, maybe that's not the best example, but it, it jacks up the pay when you choose that. But I don't look at it as an additional gamble if you choose it right. If someone gets demoted, like Katori, for example, and you want to take Konechny for a point, and the under on Katori, it's going to shoot it, the, the price, pretty high. You know they don't play on the same power play. You know Katori was going to be on power play too. You know that they're not playing five on five together. It's virtually impossible for them to be involved on the same goal. So you're betting on the top line doing its job or getting a point on the top power play. And then that meaningless guy on the bottom doesn't really, doesn't really count with Wenberg, but you could do like, if you did like the Wenberg under on point for, from last night, and then you did the Mika Zibanejad, there's no way that Mika Zibanejad and Wenberg are going to be on the ice together. They're not on the same power play. He's on line three, one's on line one. So if you're right about Zabanajed and then you take the under on Wenberg, it amplifies those odds because you're taking two guys on the same team. And many times you can use that. We got Seattle playing tonight, right? I didn't give any bets on the video, 
for Seattle. Well, how about that one? The only problem is everybody sucks on their team. But it, let's say we take McCann for a point. We had the Bjorkstrand demotion. Now, we, we have to confirm that, but Bjorkstrand got, I believe, nine minutes of ice time last night. And he's still being priced as if he's a normal top six player. I do have to double check the combo, see if there's going to be any changes announced after the loss last night. But if you wanted to take McCann or Eberly, for example, Eberly's top line, top power play. So you take Eberly for a point and the under on Tolvanen, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Bjorkstrand, I always mix up those two. If you take the over on Eberly and the under on Bjorkstrand, they're, Bjorkstrand's on power play too. He's on line four. They should never be able to connect on a goal. And yet, if you're right about both of those, it will amplify the odds. It's not something that I look for all the time, but in unique circumstances, like the Konechny one is a, a decent one when it happens. A point for Konechny and then the under on a fourth line Atkinson or Couturier or something like that. So it's using the trickle-down snakeonomics knowledge to amplify the odds on a particular bet. And I also want you to know if there's any casual hockey bettors, I know regular ass people, maybe all that talk about clenched cheeks makes me use the word ass a little bit more. I know some regulars watch this with basketball people. I don't believe there's such a thing as baseball people, but just generic whoever's watch these videos. I don't know a lot of the rules about hockey and whatnot. One thing that I do think you should know is based on the total that you see in the game, that determines the price that you're going to get when putting some parlays in. So if you see a game priced at five and a half, like the, I think the Arizona Seattle game, that's five and a half tonight, right? Is the, yeah. So if that's five and a half and you're able to take one of those two point combos that we normally get, like if you take two line mates to register a point, your payout will be higher than if that over under is set at six and a half. So it's not just like, oh, those are their two prices. And when you get them at them together, you get this. There's more that goes into it. If this same game had a total of six and a half opposed to five and a half, clicking on those two names with the same exact prices, you click on Beneers and Everly, it would be lower if the total for the game was six and a half. So there are other circumstances that determine the prices. So... I say take an over for one and an under for another. That amplifies the odds. In a game with a total of five and a half, if you're able to nail like a two-point line mate combo, that amplifies the odds. If you took Hints and Robertson in a game with a total of five and a half, it's the odds are going to be better than if the game has a total of six or six and a half. Hopefully you understand that. You guys know my thoughts on people understanding things. I just think it's impossible. I think it's impossible for people to grasp concepts. So maybe I'm just speaking out into the night or you guys do get it. And in that case, golf clap, congratulations. There are a lot of things that people kind of learn along the way. It's just hard. You got to put yourself in my shoes. You know, it's one of those things where like the news, they only show you the bad things. So you think the world is just awful. When I go through and I see, oh my God, I took uh, Carolina and the under six and a half. When I've explained, not not twice, not seven times, I mean, over 10 times this season, never combined money lines with under six and a half. And people who watch my videos, and, I, and you can't use the excuse that it's always somebody new. I've had people apologize. Oh, sorry, I forgot that one. Oh yeah? You forgot? How? I would be the worst teacher. I, I, I I'm telling you. Somebody on the live stream yesterday said, Andy, you should be a director with how much you know you know about production. I would get fired. I'd get fired. You think I would have the patience for some actor? Not because as a performer, I, I, I've been on that side of it. And the directors usually try to exhibit like positivity and patience unless they're a dirtbag. I got news for you. I would be the dirtbag. But you guys have enough people telling you, all right, you, you, you click those YouTube ads. Hey, do you want to you wanna make the 200K by just kind of staying at home, juggling things around? <laughs> I can't believe people fall for those things. I, 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 need, I need my faith, not in humanity, faith in intellect restored. I need it. I need it. Anyway, without further ado, it's Friday night, which means many people just complete savage 
gargoyle just wants steak don't want to learn the thing i don't care money line total just uh, tell me what to click so i can put it in and click you might have a problem sir i don't have to say this anymore i don't work for Ancha. call 1-800 gambler i'm sick of you if you couldn't watch any of that i really am sick of you i don't want you to be here i'm trying to grow this channel all your comments all your life but the savage people who come here looking to ravage and rape around my village and just take the pics and move on you disgusting virtual Viking. I don't want you here. If I could click some of these buttons here on my power glove and get rid of you, I would, but I can't, I can't. You can just come and ravage at your own discretion and you're not giving me clicks. You're not liking, you're not commenting, you're not doing anything. You're coming here and you're pillaging like the virtual vermin that you are. Who am I young? Does this, do these people even exist? I don't know. But like Michael Jordan has to invent villains in his mind. Maybe I just invented some too. And I'm looking at you, virtual villain. I don't know if you exist, but I'm going to choose to believe you do. Now, I mean, you're not getting that. You're not getting that anywhere on the internet, let alone on a random Friday night NHL sniffs clenched ass cheek sports show. I'm firing tonight. Let's get on to those Saturday games. All right, we're going to start with the Bruins and the Flyers. Typically, this would be, oh, yeah, well, let's do like an under six and a half or something like that. Styles make fights, just like I said, with the Carolina game the other night. But these games between the Bruins and the Flyers have been a little too wacky for my liking. Even the day game play between them a couple months back went over, so I'm staying away from that one. However, the Islanders and Jets, the Islanders defense, you've been watching that. You've been watching goal, uh, Sorokin's goaltending. Yeah, not so great, but I think Varlamov is going to be playing this one. Doesn't matter to me. You're going to put this at five and a half. I like that. And hey, just think about what I said about the totals and point prop prices. If this is set at five and a half and you're able to nail a Shifley Connor two point combo or a Toffoli Monahan two point combo, you're going to get better deals than you would on a game that was set at six and a half. Blues Wild. First thought is means a lot for both of the teams fighting for wild card. You know what it is. Don't you know? Bump it up under six and a half. Red Wings Predators. You really got to have balls to bet anybody who's playing the Nashville Predators. And they're trying to bait us in with that minus 165. We know Detroit gives up a ton of chances. I know a bunch of people on the Patreon love the point props for some of the main figures on Nashville. Somewhat of an early game at five. I'll be leaning on some of those guys on Nashville for player prop overs. Edmonton, Toronto, you know what this smells like. It smells like not teen spirit. It smells like, actually it does smell like teen spirit because a teen spirit is filled with ruckus. This one, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do two points here, two points there, two points everywhere. Uh, Senators, Devils, it's so depressing that a game between two members of the Scam 5 doesn't seem to have the same automatic ruckus detection that it would typically have. The way Jake Allen's playing, it's unbelievable, and it's so depressing to say, but I might do it off to the side. I may take two points for this guy, two points for this guy. More ruckus. I guess we're going to have to downgrade that to hidden ruckus potential. It's all going to be contingent on Jake Allen. I don't know, returning to Jake Allen, but right now he's some other guy. They snuck in a different goalie. Maybe somebody should check who that is under that mask because it doesn't necessarily look like Jake Allen the way he's playing at the moment. But there could be hidden ruckus in that one. Ah, Panthers, Rangers, that's a bump it up under six and a half. We did it last time. We're going to do it this time. We did it last game with the Panthers. Panthers are pretty reliable with those unders when they when they get the right matchups. So go under six and a half there. Flames, Canucks, I don't like messing around with teams who have nothing to gain, nothing to lose. It can go any which direction. Blue Jackets, Vegas. Blue Jackets playing tonight. They have to go to Vegas tomorrow. Vegas should smack them. I, it's only a matter of time before Barbashev cashes in on that plus point prop. I know people are rolling their eyes. I don't give a rat's ass. Don't take it then. I will take Barbashev for a point. Blackhawks, Sharks. We failed trying to find that hidden ruckus between Anaheim and the Blackhawks. I feel like they owe us. Do I want to go back to it? I don't know. I'm going to have to think about it, and I guess I will make that determination based on how the events are going during the day. Can, how can you find out what I think? I don't know. Probably by joining the Patreon. That's where you can get all my Saturday picks, all my Saturday parlays, 
and everything there is to know, especially considering next week, there'll be no Thursday show, no Friday show, no picking corner. So if you're going to want my picks from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you're going to have to subscribe. Oh my, go be a Green Bay Packers minority owner. Did you watch this show? Did you watch this show? I just gave you legitimate entertainment. Do you, do you see what's on? Go, go watch nine movies on Netflix right now. Go watch. Just go scroll to the right based on suggest. Even they could be suggested for you and tell me if you had. Tell me if you matched the enjoyment of this. And if you did, then don't subscribe. If you don't subscribe, it's patreon.com slash Andy Francis. And always remember down below, I put the links from Odd Shopper that you got. You guys said like I, I, I don't I don't have a bet three sixty five account. I'm gonna say well, after that I reached out to them. They gave me those links. It says like you know Odd Shopper Andy Francis bet three sixty five, and it will take you to the affiliated deals. Let's see if I remember them in Fanduel. Around the country, everywhere other than North Carolina, you bet five dollars. You gotta win your bet. And then if you win your first bet, you better choose something smart. <laughs> well, that's why we're here. You get $200 in bonus bets. So you place a $5 bet on FanDuel. I think you got to deposit 10. Not a fan of that trick. Because if you see it's a $5 bet, maybe you deposit five. Now you don't qualify. I don't like that. I'll be the first to tell you. And I'm telling you, FanDuel, if you have one of your people. Oh, you're going to take the link away? You gonna take the link away? Think the Green Bay Packers minority owners care? I really am on one today. But FanDuel, you bet five, you get 200 in free bonus bets if you win. In North Carolina, North Carolina, we got the Carolina Hurricanes hopefully pulling out another win tonight. But you also got that new sign-up deal on FanDuel where you don't have to win. You deposit 10, you bet five, they're just giving you 250. So they really want you in over there. DraftKings, it's you bet five. And you get 150. Oh, deposit 10 just in case. The descriptions of these promotions are down below. You guys know, based on the game, and I hope you think this is a gimmick. I don't give a rat's ass if any of you sign up. You know what? I hope you don't sign up just to prove a point that I don't care. I don't care. I use every single sports book because with the NHL, it's not like the NFL where, oh, yeah, I can bet that on season. You guys know this. FanDuel, they allow you no goal in the first five minutes, under on player goals, the modified shots for same game parlays. You can take a guy for two shots, three, five, four shots, five. You see that Beetlejuice uh, promo or the, the trailer for the new one? So I, I need memberships to all the sports books because they all offer different things. Player prop parlays. Where can you get those? DraftKings bet 365. So depending on what you want to bet, you need all the different sports. But I don't want to do it. Well, then you don't want to win. Say you're here for entertainment. That's fine. I'm actually only here to provide entertainment for this show. I don't care if anybody wins. Am I a man? Do you, do you see me try? Oh, your return on investment. Return on investment. My clenched ass cheeks. You want to know what I got to worry about in the middle of the night? Dishing out your sniffs. Holy crap. Oh, this is the best me you're ever getting. This, this, this is good. This is good. Uh, and I'm so, you know what? Gen Z self-congratulatory. So am I. This is how you should be going into the weekend. Excited. The world is your oyster. Wow, I said goodbye like hours ago. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I know I certainly did. I'll talk to you later.